Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Two Asian Blokes Podcast, a podcast where we will talk about Asian pop culture, movies, TV shows, music, anime, comic books, uh, food, whatever we feel like at the time, really. My name is Dan with a H, and with me, as always, is my co-host, Tavi. Hi, Tavi. When you're giving that intro, I noticed a little bit of a nervous disposition in your laugh. No, I'm not in emotional turmoil at the moment, <laughs> Tavi. What are you talking about? <laughs> when you first approached me to start doing this podcast, I was admittedly a bit apprehensive at first because, like, you know, I'm pretty, like private guy and i was like oh yeah like broadcasting my voice to a lot of people to listen to is uh was somewhat daunting but you know i just i just did i'm like yeah you know it's pretty interesting and it's been yeah pretty much a mostly positive experience really mm. um and it's been good for me to you know explore a lot of the movies that we've talked about and keep them as kind of a diary whether or not this podcast is super successful or it's super chill like it's been a great experience. We've been having a fun time, haven't we? Up till now. <laughs> As there is positive and negatives, we've come to this, which is the uh, the Netflix Cowboy Bebop adaptation, which was a real a real slog to get through. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I was probably going to watch it regardless of the reviews and the quality coming out of the gate. I probably wouldn't have finished it if not for this podcast, to be honest. Um, but I was I was going to watch it either way, uh, just out of morbid curiosity. And and as a fan of the anime as well, I, I you know. Yeah, I many of it. the reviews that I've heard from people that I know personally is mm. usually I watch 10 minutes of the first episode and then I stopped. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have that luxury. Don't we, we don't have that luxury. we've decided to do this <laughs> uh, <laughs> thing. I, 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 I wanted to stop, but yeah, I yeah. had to do it. Um, yeah. um, I did have a couple of beers through the to get me through. <laughs> oh, yeah. So so much alcohol was involved in the watching of this show. Um, but, yeah, we're, we're going to be talking about the, the Netflix series of Cowboy Bebop. It's still on Netflix if you want to watch it. So if you haven't watched it yet and do want to watch it, we're going to be talking non-spoilers first and then spoilers. Uh, although, spoiler alert, it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically the same story. It's about... Spike Spiegel, Jet Black, and Faye Valentine. The crew of the Bebop. Yeah, and I've left out Radical Ed because um, she's not in the adaptation. Well, so it's about, yeah. it's about the three. And Iron's in there, but they barely use Iron because they can't use the dog to do the gags like they did in the anime. But anyway, it's about a group of space bounty hunters and their wacky adventures in what is, I guess, the the action comedy that is the Netflix uh, live action <laughs> um, adaptation. Well, did you do air quotes when you said comedy? I uh, did do air quotes. Okay. I, I thought I heard air quotes. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, where do we begin, really? <laughs> so so just, just a bit of context, like, before we watch the show. Like, um, obviously, we, we weren't the first people in the world to watch this show. Um, so there were already reviews surfacing by the time I got around to watching it. And you, you watched it before me as well, so you gave me a bit of a heads up as to the, the general quality. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, like, I needed to talk to someone. <laughs> it's like when you're um, watching a car accident or a train wreck happen, you do want to voice it to someone, I guess. <laughs> yeah. How about we start with our anticipations and expectations of the show with all the promotional material leading up to it? Even back when we did our uh, analysis of the opening when it came out on YouTube and even before then, like when we first heard about the TV series, we had different mm. levels of expectation, right? Yeah, I think you were the more positive one. I was the more optimistic for sure, especially after the opening. They still didn't fix the opening. You know? <laughs> no, they, didn't. they didn't get your letters, Tommy. <laughs> they changed it by adding more names, but they didn't fix it. They... I don't know. It's like yeah. if you if you it just basically uh you know vindicates me in a sense that in a way that they've just basically added more credits in just random spots. Mm. Why wouldn't you signpost the names in a much more like you know obvious manner, a much more cooler manner, mm. you know? I mean, are we just going to assume everyone knows who John Cho is? Probably American audiences, yeah. Yeah, for sure. But like there's going to be some people who say, "Oh, 
is um is Spike being played by Elena Satine? I didn't know that. <laughs> but anyway, that was my rant in the previous one. We won't go back yeah, to well, that. Yeah, well, if you haven't seen it, you should check it out. It's pretty funny. <laughs> there was more promotional material after that opening sequence was released. There was a teaser followed by a, a proper trailer. What did you think about those? Yeah, we, we did get a chance to talk about that because mm. I think I was like in the midst of my surgery. So we didn't really <laughs> yeah. talk about it. Surgery um, caused by <laughs> probably those trainers. <laughs> yeah, maybe. maybe, maybe. Um, yeah, I honestly had a bit of a mixed feeling still to the an initial teaser. The teaser was um, the one where uh, it's called like the lost session, right? And, yeah, yeah. And they it's kind like, of play with the editing. and Yeah, I think it's just a compilation of like uh, cut footage from the show. Mm. Um, and they just put it in. I don't know. It like, it just had that weird uncanny look. It did make me feel like it could have been good mm. because it was showcasing more of the the bebop uh showcasing the fight scenes you know the physicality of the actors mm. and also the personality of the characters i think were and just the fun natured aspect of the anime mm. which they probably drew too much from in the uh in the live action you mean the, but the yeah, banter like, is that just the the comic book feel like the ah, 70s comic okay. book feel yeah, yeah, yeah. um it, okay it could have been yeah but that is also like a criticism Maybe that it was uh, maybe too faithful to the anime, mm. that it just looked uncanny. Yeah, um, we might we yeah. might get into a bit more of that when we talk start talking about the actual show. Mm. Um, but yeah, definitely the teasers. The action looked good. I think the, I found the dialogue very camp, <laughs> very very cringe. But yeah, yeah. Um, again, it's kind of like is that the intent or? Uh, an accident that it's at camp we, it's hard to tell from a teaser you know mm. until you actually get to watch the the whole show so yeah i think the teaser might have turned me off a little bit mm. but then the trailer came out and i was like oh, okay it might be okay yeah. by the time the show actually came out i was kind of like not expecting it to be terrible but you know ready for it to not be good I guess when it came out, I was, I think I was just on the computer and risky, risky messages me. And it's like, it's up. And I'm like, Oh dear Lord. So I'm like, <laughs> better get started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I watched the first 20 minutes. It just felt wrong. Mm. It just, can you pinpoint the exact moment that you were like, nah, this is not good. I mean, there was not really a moment. It was mm. kind of like this kind of creeping feeling. It's mm. kind of like, uh, it was like a push-pull. Mm. Um, I mean, you have to give credit where credit's due. Like, you know, the set designs look good. Wasn't a huge fan of the cinematography. Um, I noticed they were using a lot of, like, these fisheye lenses and... Dutch uh, angles. Dutch angles. <laughs> yeah. like, and it's just... I think it was trying to kind of replicate the anime too much. Mm. Um, but... Like, when you watch it, it's not the worst thing that you've ever seen. No, I don't think so. It's not. Like, there's there's worse things out there. But it was really hard for me to detach myself. Because I, I did want to give the show a go, you know. Um, okay, this is a new interpretation. But I, I guess I just kind of failed to do that. Mm. Um, if I was to pinpoint a moment, maybe it's when they were kind of doing the the Jingle All The Ways storyline with Jet <laughs> with Black. Jet Black, okay. Uh, well, that was a, that's not from the anime at all, right? No. Jet has been recognized. Um, Mustafa Shakir mm. is basically recognized as the best part of that show, okay. of the adaptation. And I would agree too. I think he did a really great Jet Black. He did a good job with what he was given in terms of dialogue because the dialogue's not great. I actually found him a bit more wooden than John Cho. Uh, yeah, again, it, it was hard to tell whether that was the direction they were mm. trying to go for or whether that was just his interpretation of, of the dialogue. Because the dialogue that is given to him, some of it is very like cheesy. I guess similar to how the anime is cheesy, but when it's done by live action people, yeah. it, it just feels wrong did you have a moment when you were just like nah <laughs> what mm. was your what, how far did you get into it i think like you is it was more of a, a creeping sense of realization that this is 
there are 10 more episodes of this. <laughs> uh, I think it was probably when I, while I was watching the first episode and it, it felt like it had been ages since I started watching it. <laughs> and then I checked the, how much longer there was and there was 20 minutes left. And I was like, oh, no, okay, I can't finish this episode tonight. <laughs> this is no good. Yeah. The pacing is a, is a big issue with the show, huh? Yeah, like yeah. you never realize how good the, the 20 minute bites that the anime were like how efficient they were it makes such a big difference having 25 20 minute episodes as opposed to 10 uh, 50 minute episodes it's a huge difference in, in the uh, storytelling ability um and i think the strength of the anime with the 20 minutes is like each episode could have its own mood but uh with the netflix adaptation they had to mix in the i guess the mood and the comedy as well so yeah. it just felt like uh this just bland you know bit of mood throughout the whole series mm -hmm. um it just to me it just felt a bit soulless watching the the adaptation you know mm. um because shinichiro watanabe is such a creative voice and you can see like you you feel it within cowboy beep up the animation if you're listening to our other podcast you know you and i we drew all the the influences like you know french noir influences hong kong cinema influences mm. the alien influences um, and such and such. But when you watch the adaptation, it's like, you just, it just feels like it just, it's just bland. It, it's it's just replicated. Bland. <laughs> it's there, yeah. but it's also at the same time, not there in a sense. Mm. Like it's not the same level of appreciation and love, I think, of those uh, influences because it's, it's, it's not influenced by yeah. them it's influenced by the anime which was influenced by them it's almost like a photograph of a photograph it's sometimes kind of hard to tell because obviously the people that are promoting the show talk like they love the show but you can never really tell if that's just because well, they, they, you have they, to talk they might the show love the show they might love the anime but they wouldn't necessarily love the influences that went into the anime you know and i think that might be the difference it's almost like secondhand love in a way. Most of the actors hadn't even heard of Cowboy Bebop or knew about the influence mm. of Cowboy Bebop yeah. before coming onto the show. And which is, you know, that's fine. You don't have to love everything to get onto a project. And if you can prove yourself to do the work, mm. I honestly don't really blame the actors for the the poor quality of mm. the show. Yeah, um, no, I, I would agree with that. I think they're working with they, what they're given as best they can, yeah. you know. Because yeah, it's definitely the writing, and it's just it's just not it's just not the same mood and stuff. Mm. I don't know. Like it's it's funny because Cowboy Bebop the anime is uh, you could argue that it's mostly inspired by Western influences, mm. but it feels very Japanese. Mm. Where it's like the adaptation is purely Western, you know. Mm. Um, but it just, it doesn't really appeal to anybody, you know, yeah. um, like I, it, it, it didn't really know what it wanted to be. Like, did it didn't want to be an action comedy. Did it want to be <laughs> sometimes a violent shooter? Yeah. You know? I, I, I don't want to be overly critical of it because anime is really hard to adapt to live action. They probably shouldn't have tried to be honest, but like, <laughs> like you, you've been saying in the past, um, but they did, they took a swing. Unfortunately, it's a, it's, it's a bit of a swing and a miss. Mm. It's hard because you can try to separate it from the anime and watch it as its own thing but imagine if you had watched that show and you had no concept of what cowboy bebop was you'd be so confused you'd be like what the hell is going on in this show this is this is really random it's, just, it's really bonkers yeah. why is there why is there a guy named vicious yeah why is there a guy named fearless what's up with that dude's <laughs> hair and what's up with that dude's beard like <laughs> it, it's just a kind of a random concept um, but then again, if you go into it having watched and loved the anime, you know, you're not going to like it either. So there's just nowhere to win, really. Yeah. Um, without, you know, the show kind of creating its own identity, which again is hard to do because you have to please the fans of the original or try to please them at least. Yeah, I don't want to be too harsh on the show. But, but you're going to be. It does. Because, it, you know. sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it, it sucks. So uh, maybe we should talk about the performances since since we seem to have a fairly positive outlook on on the performances. So um, you talked about Mustafa Shakir being a highlight of the show. Mm. 
Yeah, I think he's pretty good. I think he gets better. All of the characters kind of grew on me mm. after a while. I, I really had to like get used to them and get used to the actor's interpretation of the characters, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like I, like I said, at the start, I found Jet Black really wooden and like mm. kind of uncharismatic. But yeah, I don't know if he got better towards the end of the show or if he just grew on me. But yeah, I ended up, you know, caring about uh, his his daughter, I guess, which is, again, I don't think is from the anime. What do you think about Daniela Pineda as Faye? I didn't really like Daniela Pineda's Faye. She was a bit too snarky. Um, and her dialogue is very, I guess what I recently discovered is very like, Josh Whedonized. <laughs> and I don't think it's just her either. I think it's a lot of the it's show. It's pretty sweary as well. What does she say? Like, welcome to the ouch, motherfuckers. And she yeah. says dickwad a lot. It's a bit crass. I saw this <laughs> clip on YouTube where somebody had edited Seinfeld laugh track to the <laughs> to the scene where um, I think Faye has just been injured. Um, and then she meets up with uh, Spike and Jet and she asks the team up and she's like stumbling onto the onto the table <laughs> like Kramer. Yeah. <laughs> it was actually really funny. <laughs> um, yeah, it's basically we're now comparing um, Cowboy Bebop to Seinfeld, <laughs> which I'm not sure should have happened. Mm. Um, John Cho, he was sometimes hit and miss. The physical stuff, I think he did really well. Mm. Well, wasn't edited great, mm. but... I, I, believe, I honestly like, couldn't you know, tell if if it was him doing stuff or not, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, like, for, you know, a 50-year-old actor sure. um, who's not traditionally, a, you know, an action star, mm. I have to give him some credit for that. Mm. His backstory and his relationship to Julia is a bit too on the nose, like, because they kind of referenced it in every episode almost mm. and he came off as a bit like mopey most of the time and that's even with jet's story you you know everything about the characters and it makes it less interesting mm. whereas in the anime it was a bit more mysterious you didn't see it all the time yeah like whenever there are flashbacks they're kind of silent movie style in the anime i mean they're a bit more vague there's usually no dialogue in the flashbacks or if there is dialogue mm. it's very sparse and yeah, they don't spell everything out for you. Mm. Whereas in the in this Netflix series, there's a whole episode that is just one <laughs> big flashback. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just tells you everything that why the antagonist, antagonist and protagonist hate each other. And yeah, you said that the characters grew on you. Oh, well, mm. I'm not sure if whether they grew on me, but I was getting used to them. There's a scene where they go bowling, which is in the mm. anime, and that was good. It's just like friendly banter and i felt like okay this is like a mm, it's a it's kind of heartwarming moment. yeah 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 there is actually one scene which it's kind of it was a bit goofy but i actually really enjoyed it mm. it's when um jet is watching the recital mm. and there's a fight scene yeah, in the yeah, background yeah. Yeah. but i thought that was pretty I, funny yeah, that was definitely a comedic <laughs> moment and yeah, yeah. It, it's funny because like the, the fight is going on silently in the background yeah. and it looks like if you focus on it it looks really like silly <laughs> like it the stuff that he's silly. doing <laughs> it almost ends up being more cartoonish than the anime but i think at that point it was like episode six episode seven or eight mm. i was kind of detaching myself i was like okay this mm. is a this is a different entity but there was a moment in the last episode where it, it just flew it back <laughs> right in my face which i told yeah, you yeah. and we'll talk about yeah, yeah but yeah, i yeah. i think you know, when you're talking about the performances of the leads i i think they were okay. They were they were okay. They they did the best with what they could do. Mm. Um, I can't say I was impressed by the performance from anyone else in the show. They were so weird. Like all the extras were really weird performances. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> I think it was the extra in the first episode. It was like the Asian dude, um, and they were mimicking the. It was a combination of the scene from the movie. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, have yeah, you seen yeah. the movie? Yeah, yeah. It's from the movie mm. and the uh, the jewel heist. Mm. Uh, or the jewel, the gambling episode. The casino heist, when, yeah. 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 Um, so it was a combination of that. And the guy was kind of hamming it up. Mm. Um, and I'm not sure if it was him, like him being a bad actor or if it was direction, you know. Mm. Um, it just didn't really translate that well. And it just seemed like most of the show just seemed like your high school live <laughs> adaptation you know yeah. like, there, there yeah, was a lot it, of it, overacting um and 
a needless amount of weird accents as well. Um, like <laughs> it, it was, it was odd. Like uh, everyone's performance, except for the leads, like you said, were was really bizarre. <laughs> you know, it's hard to tell whether it's intentional or not because it doesn't mix with <laughs> the performances of the leads. You know, <laughs> I'm not sure if you noticed this, but um, you know the scene. I think it's in the first episode when she's like, you know, investigating and they do that montage when he's looking for information. Mm, There's yeah. just a, I guess, some B-roll of kids like kicking a ball to a kid and the kids just look so uninvested and I just couldn't like, like stop help but laugh. And they're just like, <laughs> just kicking. They're just like doing these really pitiful kicks. And it just, <laughs> it was like, man, why did you leave this out? <laughs> It's just the the world just didn't feel alive like mm. it did in the anime. It, it kind of felt like um like a theme park world, mm. you know, like, yeah. With like yeah. kind of Disney <laughs> Disney staff members just roaming around and like if you try to interact with them, you know they'll do their best to to act their parts, but they're not professional actors. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what it kind of felt like to me. I was reading a comment about this like an issue is the look of the show is that it's like it's too clean mm, some parts of it is, yeah, is way yeah. too clean yeah um it's like it, it's hard to explain um it's just that the show just looks like a set all of it look, yeah. looks like a set that's probably a budgeting issue to be honest well obviously the budget didn't go into any fucking space battles yeah, yeah, Where are yeah. my goddamn space battles, man? <laughs> I was I was watching some of the anime today while I was eating lunch. Yeah. And uh, like the the eco terrorist episode, they're like flying through hyperspace and shit, and there's all these mm. rockets and stuff. Like, man, this is so cool. <laughs> when they do the um uh who was the 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 villain with the Afro? Um Abdul Hakim. Yeah, Abdul Hakim. When mm. they're doing that, like, you know, there's all these animals running around and then Spike is trying to stop his car with his, you know, with his spaceship yeah. and they're flying around over the bridge and stuff. Yeah. There's none of there's none of that. It's there's there's a little bit, but it's like the bare minimum of what you would call like a space chase. All yeah. they really needed was one good space flight scene, I think, and, and I yeah. would have been pretty satisfied with that. Because uh, there was yeah, none. There was zero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, like, uh, yeah, you mentioned the action or the, the physical stuff that John Cho is doing. The action was fine. There was maybe one good scene, the action scene that stood out to me, and it was like right at the end. It's weird because the action sequences have the elements of what I would like in an action year. There's the shootouts, mm. there's martial arts. It's fairly violent at points um but like, i don't know it just didn't feel right it just felt it didn't feel punchy you know like um mm. it wasn't it just, fun to watch yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. when we're talking about being too clean or the frame rate thing because of the way people fall over like their actions are too smooth mm. um and it just looks strange like it looks slow mm. um there's a there's an editing technique that you can do where you kind of like jump cut in between an action. Let's say in the in the raid two, when he smashes baseball bat boy's face with the baseball bat, mm -hmm. you can cut some frames in between the motion so it gets there faster and it mm. impacts harder. Yeah. And they didn't have to do that in the Cowboy Bebop adaptation, but it just everything just felt like it was almost too fluid, right? Yeah, and it just didn't feel like right. You know, mm. and I think they were teetering between whether they wanted to be like John Wick violence to mm. Marvel violence because you'd see like blood come out, but you wouldn't see like a, a headshot. Yeah. But then there's one particular moment where it's quite gory. <laughs> yeah. I was like, geez. And I, I think that's probably the main issue with the show is, like you said, it didn't really know what it wanted to be and therefore didn't commit to any mm. one style or one tone yeah. for that matter mm -hmm. <laughs> uh like yeah per episode it, it just jumps it shifts tonally so many times that it's hard as an audience member to keep up with how you're supposed to be feeling uh about anything that's happening on the screen the performances as well were very uh unpredictable i guess uh mm. in a sense that you know there'd be one scene where they're kind of making these crude jokes about like 
prostitutes or whatever. <laughs> but then the next scene is Bukaki jokes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I can't believe I didn't bet on sixty nine. It almost <laughs> felt like that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, <it was> like... <laughs> oh, like like they're a bunch of frat boys or something. But then the next scene, he's like longing over his long lost love, and you know you're meant to feel. Sorry for him, I guess. There you go. That's the difference between, like, you know, the Japanese and the American mentality is, like, the humor is a bit, it's going to be a bit more frat boy, you know? <laughs> the show is um, so horny. Like, <laughs> they're yeah, always yeah. visiting a strip or sex club. <laughs> yeah, I'm just remembering now. Um, they go to, like, this, yeah, the sex clubs and shit. And, like, but yeah, when they're, whenever they're following leads and getting information, they kind of end up at, like, CD locations. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's... Like I, I kind of like the aesthetic in some parts. Mm. Like I, I, lo- I like a, a lot of the spaceports they go to. They have that kind of like Tokyo slash Hong Kong kind of neon glow, but at the same time they kind of look a bit dirty. Um, but they're very fleeting. A, a lot of it is just set in like um, kind of more noir locations, mm. like wet streets kind of thing yeah, that could yeah. be anywhere. But then you'll have like Jet's ex-wife's residence, which is like a random suburb. The anime as well has lots of different locations. It, it does have varied locations as well. But um, they're, they're all kind of, I feel like they make more sense in the world mm. um, than, you know, a suburban household would necessarily. Like, Yeah, I just... I think, as I was saying before, I just the anime just has soul, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely lacks the depth of the anime. <laughs> yeah. Like, like the the group dynamic. I would argue that in the Netflix show, the group is more tight knit than it is in the anime. But that's kind of like a double edged sword because mm. in the anime, like loneliness is one of the recurring themes of the anime. So, like, yeah. even though the crew of the Bebop are together and traveling together they are also alone mm. and they choose to battle their demons alone. So that's why yeah. it's, it's very kind of melancholic when, when Spike eventually leaves to confront Gross, his past yeah. because they are like, they, they travel together and they have been through a bit together, but ultimately yeah. they're their own person and they're going to, you know, go their separate ways at the end of the day because that's life, you know? I think the, the friendships are done in a much more subtle way because mm. yeah you could you could argue that it's more tight knit in the adaptation just thinking about it now um you know they they, they kind of state that they have each other's backs and stuff you know mm. yeah. and they try to help each other out more but as you said it is a double-edged sword because then it becomes a bit more generic it's Definitely, funny because yeah. you're taught you're kind of taught that way in screenwriting to kind of bring the characters together but this isn't an example of maybe when it doesn't quite work well, it's because it's not earned i don't think the the friendship is ever earned in the netflix show like mm. there's a maybe one episode where spike and Faye do a bit of bonding is that when they're showing tattoos yeah and they're like swapping war stories and bragging yeah, about yeah. bounties and stuff. And the result of that is like a, a, a tightly knit team that, you know, will basically take a bullet for each other, which mm. it, it just, it's not, it doesn't really feel um, genuine. You know? It just reminds me of um, Samurai Shampoo as well. The relationship between Fu, Mugen and Jin, hmm. just for some context, it's Samurai Shampoo is basically Cowboy Bebop, but in the Edo period with <laughs> yeah. uh, hip hop as its background. And it's also really like slick. It's really, really, really cool show. Hmm. Um, but yeah, like the main characters are always at each other's throats. Jin and Mugen, their motivation is literally once we help uh, Fu find her dad, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> that's the that's yeah. motivation. Yeah. Uh, but then there's like this this friendship that builds. Yeah, I think it's it's through the bickering that they develop their yeah. their bonds and stuff. But like in the Netflix show, they're just I don't know calling each other dickheads or whatever. Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it's not the same. Yeah, it, yeah. It it lacks the depth. Even the fighting and the uh, yeah, it just lacks depth. Um, I think the only good thing to come out of this show is probably the soundtrack. But there's some, there's some odd tracks. Uh, I don't remember them, but I just found like this doesn't sound like a, a Yoko Kano song. It kind of sounded a bit more modern. Yeah, I um, think I, I know what you're talking about, and, and it was actually in one of the the action scenes yeah. that kind of stood out as being a bit yeah. different. Um, but 
I, I think the fact that the music is good kind of makes me a bit more angry. If anything, <laughs> it's like, like it's it's like if you have a if you had a steak with a really delicious sauce, but the meat is slightly rotten. <laughs> like the sauce will do its best, but ultimately you can still taste that something is not right. And and at the end of the day, you're just gonna feel sick. Like, <laughs> that's, that's what like watching this show is for me. Um, yeah, yeah. If if there's a positive from this show, it makes me realize how good the anime yeah. really is. And and Netflix, it's on Netflix as well. The anime, so yeah. it's like, yeah, maybe they realize that people would rather be watching the anime. And they decided yeah. to put it on. Uh, but yeah. There is um, there is one thing I'll say before spoilers. Mm. There is a, a Korean movie called Space Sweepers, um, and that is like the closest thing that you will see to a good cowboy bebop adaptation. Mm. Um, the movie itself has its flaws, but it's fun. Um, it has a. Uh, it basically follows a group of um, like you know space. Uh, basically, basically they collect space debris and sell it to like people on Mars to like the rich people and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's got it's got the like you know the kind of cowboy bebop team group dynamic there. Not trying to kill each other, but they're kind of at each other's throats a lot. Mm. And there's a there's a lot of space battles, a few shootouts. And the color palette of that show is like so much more like colorful than um, the Netflix adaptation, mm. which at times can look really flat. Mm, it looks very um, washed out. Yeah, I would I would definitely recommend watching Space Sweepers. Okay, oh, I'll definitely check out Space Sweepers. It's on Netflix, actually. I just checked, looked it up. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 really entertaining. Like it's you're not gonna learn, you're not gonna become a better person by watching it. And you know, but like it's it's just a fun show, and I think it's what I wanted Cowboy Bebop to be, mm. but I didn't get. Um, but enough of that. Let's talk right. about let's talk spoilers. spoilers. Um, so, Vicious and Julia, fuck me, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, they really did a number on Vicious. Vicious has basically been cucked <laughs> beyond recognition almost <laughs> vicious in the show and i was when i was watching it today when he first reveals himself to Faye, mm. she's frightened of this guy mm. he's looking you can see like the look on his face yeah he's, he's like slit this guy's throat uh and he's kind of talking behind her so she can't really see who it is the and... dude's the dude's name is vicious yeah <laughs> <laughs> his name is vicious and in the in the adaptation it's just just a, just a whiny <laughs> Kylo Ren 2.0. Oh man, who's like, oh, dad, I just want, <laughs> I just want power. Oh and yeah, to I mean, well, we should preface this like the the show <laughs> yeah. it it sticks somewhat to the events of the anime, but it takes a lot of liberties, <laughs> particularly with the characters of Vicious and Julia and the Syndicate in general like you do have to take risks i'll acknowledge that for sure but there must have been a point where it's like this is just wrong like mm. when you're in the writing room it's like i don't think this is gonna work <laughs> i'm not sure if we mentioned this but i think we were saying like whether or not we wanted to give julia or it was a good idea to give julia a bit more of a story mm. um because she's basically a plot device in the anime yeah um, so we thought, you know, maybe if we fleshed out her character more, that might be a good idea. Mm. Um, Netflix adaptation proved that it was not a good idea. Well, I mean, I don't do know that. if that proves it, but certainly what they did with her was not a good idea. <laughs> um, yeah, like the... Uh, first of all, the they're, last... they're in the show too much. That, <laughs> they're that's in the a first way thing. too much. Yeah. Um, um, I, like, I, I was worried before the show came out, that they would focus too much on Spike's arc um, as, like, you know, the driving force of the show, which it kind of is in the anime as well. Like, they, yeah. it's the main arc um, out yeah. of those three backstories. Mm. Um, but it's not really the central focus. It's more mm. like the, how they decide to end the show is with the end of Spike's arc, basically. Um, but in this show, like, every episode is about or has some development towards the Spike arc. And that means that Vicious and Julia are just in it, like in every episode. Um, because again, it's 10, 45 minute to 60 minute episodes. So, yeah. I mean, all the Julia and Vicious stuff, I just found extremely uninteresting mm. when I would rather have 
had more time with the leads. <laughs> more jingle know? all the way stuff. I more jingle all the way stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just have an episode where he's trying to track down this doll, you know, like, and he has to beat up Sinbad to get it or something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as much as I, I think I was messaging you, it, it was like, I thought it was a dumb storyline, but it could work. It's you more know? in line with the tone of the anime, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Because you know? it's more madcap and it's more like there's more potential for a fun time. Whereas like even in the anime, the Spike stuff is kind of mopey. Yeah. But because it, it's kind of used sparingly, you can mm. it's easier to digest. But in this, it's like another scene with like Vicious being a whiny bitch and, and yeah. Julia being a sad beaten woman i don't know like uh until the end i guess because <laughs> we were talking about when uh, i guess whether it's stockholm syndrome or not but mm. um but my shift to kind of like just taking the live action adaptation like just going with the flow with it mm. and kind of saying okay i can probably enjoy this show a little bit uh then it got to the last episode which was <laughs> basically uh it's a recreation of the uh, the church shootout, yeah. um, but this time Jet and Faye help Spike, which I thought, okay, it's interesting. She has a pretty cringe line in there, but it was kind of nice to see them working together. Um, mm. Jet finding out about Spike being part of the syndicate, I, that didn't sit too well it's, with me. It but, was forced drama, I think. Yeah, it, it's an adaptation, so forced drama, and he helps him out, it's fine. But it's when... Uh, there's the really iconic scene in the anime where Spike and Vicious are facing each other. Spike has a gun, uh, who it's pointed at Vicious. Vicious has a sword, mm. uh, like basically on Spike's Good chest. shot, though. <laughs> Good yeah. frame. Um, and they, but like Spike shoots, uh, Vicious and then, uh, Vicious, like kind of stabs Spike at the same time. And they're mm. both injured. Um, and what happens in the anime is, um, I think, uh, Vicious literally grabs Spike's face with one hand and chucks him out the fucking window. Mm. But then Spike chucks grenades, and that's like this really cool moment because, I mean, the dude, his name is Vicious. He's he's a badass, you know. He's like one of the most dangerous men in the galaxy, mm. right? So tossing a guy out with his hand, one hand. In the Netflix adaptation, uh, Vicious gets back up after getting shot. But then it's just shot again by Julia, <laughs> and like, okay, all right, you know, it was it, it was starting to irk me. I'm like, okay, so she's basically stolen Spike's moment. But let's let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you know, Spike and Julia have what they want. Yeah, and then Julia's like, oh. When you found out I was alive, why did you come and see uh, me? Yeah. And then Spike is, I don't, I don't remember what John Cho says, or fearless. I think he was as stunned as us when she said that. I think he was as stunned as the audience was because it comes out of nowhere. And then she's like, <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Vicious is injured. I can be part of the syndicate now. I can control <laughs> the syndicate. And then she shoots Spike out the window. Yeah. And then after that, I was like, no, nah, I don't want anything to do with the show anymore. <laughs> and the thing is, you could maybe have worked that if you had alluded to it. They, they do a little bit. Like, she she tries to get Vicious murdered. She approaches Mal to... But her motivation know. in the show is that she wants to be... Free, free of him. vicious, and then yeah, she wants yeah. to be with Spike. Yeah, like that's that's it. And then suddenly, like in the anime, Julia is someone that you, if I was Spike, I'd want to be with. You know, I'd want to, I'd risk my life for this woman. Sure. In the Netflix, nah, get fucked. Like <laughs> you, but basically, Spike has no more motivation to continue the show now. I mean, like if they're gonna do some like BS thing where like probably Julia will die, and then it's like, oh, I've realized that. I was a fool and I shouldn't have gone for power. Mm. It really rubbed me the wrong way. Mm. And I think it's a pretty common, uh, I think it's a pretty polarizing decision that a lot of people have talked about. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm sure that enraged a lot of fans. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't like what they did with Vicious in general. I think they took his persona away from him. Like, he is meant to be a, a, a sinister badass. But, he's meant to be vicious. Yeah, he's not vicious <laughs> in in the Netflix show. He's he's a baby, 
uh, like they do everything to kind of take it away from him. They give him like daddy issues. Did you recognize the actor who plays Caliban? Is he the guy from Fringe? Uh, yes, he was also <laughs> the guy from Return of the King. Who's <laughs> like, it's yeah, his yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like, oh, that's. <laughs> And that's, that, that wasn't a bad casting, to be honest. It's like, oh, you've got the the, the pinnacle of unimpressed dad to, to be it's to true. the show. So as you said, they they did everything to take it away. So they they casted this guy yeah, to like I guess they made fully him, demasculate. Him. They just... made him borrow me. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, it wasn't good. Like from the get go, he was he was not a good character. Uh, not no. someone that I, I could I could fear. Um, <laughs> yeah, what they did with Julia, yeah, probably would have been better as a plot device. Um, yeah, yeah, I think maybe like you said, if they had alluded to her having that side to her at all, it might have worked, uh, and it might have been an interesting you know risk to take. Um, but as as the way they did it, it just felt like a big f u to the fans, you know. <laughs> yeah, it did. It really did. Uh, um, yeah. And it wasn't I, I the felt, last f u on the show either, as well, which I'll, I'll talk about in a sec. But it wasn't good. Like that, it 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 stole not just uh, it it ruined the end of Vicious's arc, it ruined the end of Spike's arc. I guess it, it ruined Julia as a character as well. But that said, they weren't good to begin with in this show. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, but I they just... Yeah. yeah they I wasn't as worse, gutted so. as maybe I should have been because, like, it was almost like I was at such a low point by that time that I couldn't get much lower. I would have to say that they ruined Piero as well. You do you think? Um, yeah, do you think? Did like you they not kinda, like that? Because no, I didn't. I it just didn't make sense that he was scared of dogs because the dogs were kind of like scared with him. Well, no, he was scared um, of cats in the anime for no, he was scared for of not cats really in anime, any yeah, reason. Yeah. Um, and then they turned Ein. Oh, fuck, we haven't even talked about Ein much. They turned Ein into a robot so they could have the the Piero hologram thing, which I'm like, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, Again, I think that and the way that yeah. he talks. Like, cause in the anime, he's just a fucking maniac who's just laughing, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. he has a child's mind, right? Yeah. So that's why when he gets stabbed, it's funny. I, when I watched the, the original Pierre Lefou episode mm. and Mad Pierre gets shot and he starts crying, like, I was just like, oh, like, I actually kind of felt a bit bad for him because he's got a child's mind and it's so much more scarier because he enjoys killing he's got a child's mind but to him it's a game it's mm. it's fun and games it's a child yeah. who enjoys killing um but in the live action adaptation they had to tie it to vicious and the tie it to everything <laughs> yeah and because like, yeah. they didn't have time for for random segues like fiero lefou you know so that's why they kind of had to tie it in to spike's arc because otherwise it would have just been random and out of place uh, but I don't know. That's like the fact that it is random is that like that's, yeah, you know, that's there why are it's other scary. dangers in the <laughs> yeah. universe that yeah. are beyond, you know, Spike and Jed and Faye's capabilities and most definitely beyond Vicious's abilities in the adaptation. I feel like I could go up against Vicious <laughs> and have a good chance. For I, I like <laughs> the guy that played the Pierre LeFou character in, in the Netflix show. I think some of the delivery was like spot on like the anime, like there's a bit where he does that laugh and it's like, ha, ha, yeah. ha, ha. And it's like, it sounds exactly right. And a part where he calls um, Spike boy as well. Is like, he's like, hello, boy. And I was like, oh, okay, that's pretty good. But they didn't commit. They didn't commit to the idea of it, I yeah. think. And that's that's the a big issue with the show is non-committal. <laughs> and Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's just like once again, he's, he's just mo- he's just movements are just too slow and fluid, and it just yeah, like yeah, looked. Yeah. yeah, there's a um, part where he's like he does that kind of juggling move on um, Spike, yeah, and it, it's kind of shot in the shadows, so you only see the shadows doing it. Yeah, um, yeah. which is I think that happens in the anime as well, but it looks really weird <laughs> in live action. Mm. Uh, and the way he moves is like kind of like B grade special effects, like something you see on the flash tv show yeah. yeah when they're planning to fight Pierre, there's that little bit of um banter mm. when like 
Jet makes them repeat like a, a comedic phrase and stuff. Like it kind of takes away from what the threat that is the Mad Pyrrha. Because when you watch the anime, she is like a, a threat. Like, you know, there's not very much humor in that episode, mm. you know. Um, where in this one, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, it's just lighthearted, you know. Yeah. That's, again, like, it's because they have to drag it out mm. to 40 minutes. And they ditch Ayn in that episode, which is, it's a big moment in the anime, but in the show, it's kind of played off as a laugh. <laughs> the, the, the thing about the adaptation, it's just, it's fine until the last episode, to me, I reckon, until that, I don't know, just like, as you said, it's basically the Netflix saying, fuck you. <laughs> I mean, I think the ending of it kind of sums up the big difference between the anime and this TV show. The ending of the anime, Spike confronts Vicious Mm. and they fight to like mutual destruction, like with the grenades falling at Vicious's feet and Spike getting plunged out of a window or whatever. Mm. Um, Like after the fight, Spike like is walking out of the church, he collapses on the staircase, Mm. Um, Mm. but he's smiling because he's kind of like done everything he wants to do. And then the camera pans out to this really, like, melancholic song. First it shows the sky and then it ultimately, like, um, pans out to the stars. And and this is kind of like a reminder to the audience that this is just the end of one man's story, like amidst Mm. a galaxy full of stories. So it really, like, hammers home the existentialist themes of that have been running throughout the course of the anime, you know? Um, yeah. But the Netflix series, it, it ends with with a drunken vision of of Ed the Radical going Spike Spiegel. You know, just listening to you compare those two scenes, just listening to you explain that is just saying, man, how good is the anime? Like it's such yeah. a it's such a beautiful ending. And then Netflix, Spike, <laughs> Spike Spiegel. Oh, no. Um, uh. the, thing, the thing is, like, I don't, I don't want to be too harsh on the actor who's playing Radical Ed. Yeah, no. Uh, because it's... She seems like a their, sweet kid. It's their first time <laughs> yeah. playing a role ever. And, uh, you know, apparently they're really excited to do the role. Mm. And I don't think it's... I don't think it's her fault um, that she's been asked to do these really exaggerated moments that you just cannot translate to live action. <laughs> Even if you had a Japanese actor do that, it they would probably be cringe. Do it. It, would it would still be cringe. cringe. It would be cringe either way. But it's the way it's so, shot as well. Yeah. It, the fish eye, it's like yeah. right in your face. <laughs> Spike! <laughs> Spike Spiegel! <laughs> Terrible. There's actually an Easter egg in, in um, episode five, I think. Oh, is it? Where they, they first like reference Radical Ed, I think. And, yeah, yeah. And I heard because Spike there's I a mean, QR um, code mentions it, yeah. on one of Sorry? the posts. There's like this QR code on one of the posts oh, um, okay. in one scene. And if you, you scan the QR code, it takes you to a YouTube video of, of an interview with the mm. actress that plays Radical Ed. Oh, okay. And she seems like a really sweet kid. Yeah, like, yeah. She, I, I think it's a, she's from New Zealand. She's a New Zealand actress. It's her first mm. role uh, or maybe first major role. Um, and she's genuinely excited to play the character. Um, she she talks about her favorite Ed moment in the anime. Mm. Uh, and even like when the camera is far away from her and she's doing like the body uh, yeah. acting, it looks mm. pretty good. Like it looks pretty spot on. But yeah. the way they but, filmed her scene in the show, it, yeah. it doesn't allow for any of that. It just allows for like uh, just assault, an assault on your eyes and ears. <laughs> it's, it's that really in your face. I can't yeah. like, describe it any other way. It is a, like a literal assault. Like imagine being Spike in that moment and just being really drunk and <laughs> having that happen to you is, which I guess is possibly the intent. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's uh, yeah. <laughs> I I feel really bad for the the actress because it's like the internet is not a forgiving place, you know. Mm. She's gonna have to deal with a lot of criticism, and that's where it's like a lot of people can get pretty messed up mm. in in this business because people 
like take things too far. Yeah, just and don't you. and don't realize that you know actors uh, actors and it's if acting if acting is bad, it's not always the actor's fault mm. either. Mm. It is probably it's like fifty fifty. It's it'd be the actor and the director because like you know you go for your casting process and you'll pick like that person because you see that they can do it mm. and then you'd rehearse and stuff and then it's up to the director to pick out and say that's not good do it mm. again i mean it's like um in confessions when we mentioned way back now <laughs> where you just like you just gotta say like that's just shit you know yeah <laughs> you gotta do it and ultimately um, it's the you know, it's not the actor's decision whether their scene makes it into the film or not. Uh, mm. So, like, yeah. it, they only have, uh, yeah, some of the blame to share. So yeah. for the for the thirty to forty people that are going to listen to this show, if you if you <laughs> yeah. if you're about to write a criticism on it, just 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 calm down, I guess. Just, um, yeah, yeah, take a moment, breathe, <laughs> and and try to put yourself into this fourteen year old actor's shoes. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like no one is intending to upset people, you know. Um, it's just. You you do your best, and whether or not like Andre Namek did his best, or all his talk was just him talking up the show, but he didn't really give a shit. Like you you, you don't know, but like, um, and so, sometimes I can forget that too because mm. I uh, can get pretty pissed off when I'm watching something <laughs> and it doesn't fall in line with my views. But like, I, I'm like wrong a lot as well. Like I've made like, you know, film making choices and story choices where like it, it just hasn't worked. Mm. Um, and then you just do it again. So it's like, it's hard to say, but all in all, I, I, yeah, I didn't like, I didn't like it at all <laughs> really. Um, it's just very bland and it just, kind of leads people to an inferior story that it exists like a what I now really I mean I did really like Cowboy Bebop before but now I love the anime because I've just yeah. realized how like deep <laughs> deep it is you yeah know? and how subtle how subtle it can be yeah for sure I you know if if you haven't watched this Netflix series just in case you're confused about our opinions on it, <laughs> I don't think either Tavi or I would recommend watching this series. Um, yeah. Like, if you've even if you've watched the anime before, just watch the anime again. I reckon <laughs> it would take the same amount of time as watching this TV show, um, and you know it's incomparable. Um, like, even as far as live action adaptations go, this is not very good i I believe it it, i believe it it can be as i like said before like space sweepers would probably be the closest to a a decent live action adaptation Mm. Um, it's hard it's it's not an easy thing to pull off yeah um and yeah this show i mean for better or worse it tried um and they've taken some swings in terms of like it's not a carbon copy of the anime by any stretch. And it, it shouldn't be. It, it doesn't, um, yeah, it shouldn't need to be. Um, like, actually, yeah, I, I was going to talk about the scene that, the action scene that stood out for me, and it's the part where it's during the flashback episode. What's his name? Vicious, <laughs> in typical uh, Vicious style, has gone off on a uh, Neptunian gangster and, like, killed him, I guess. So, mm-hmm. like, everybody is trying, is gunning for Vicious. They want him dead. Um, mm. So to remedy this, Spike or Fearless, as they call him on this TV show, <laughs> uh, he goes and just kills the entire Neptunian cartel. Um, yeah. And that scene stood out to me as being somewhat different to all the other action scenes that, that had been featured on yeah, the show yeah. previously. I'd agree with that. It, it was it's very kind of like like, like uh, John Wickian, I guess. Yeah. Um, and like kind of had that Daredevil vibe of yeah. uh, seeming like it's one take kind of thing. Um and I think it's because uh, there's also there's more of an emotional stake to it, an emotional mm. element, um, because he's doing this where he knows he's going to get into a lot of shit, but he's doing it for his friend. Yeah, you know. Mm. But it kind of just makes sense because he sleeps with his he sleeps with Julia. <laughs> yeah. But um, I mean, if we take that aside, like it's I mean a seemingly fairly noble moment. Sure, I guess, and it's a good scene. Um, like it, it's 
I think yeah, it's, it's I fairly like well that done. Scene too. Um, yeah. And the along along with the um, the jet. <laughs> <laughs> the jet dancing yeah. and the John Cho I think those were the two highlight fight sequences for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they were both kind of like off focus and filmed from outside the room. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Like if the show had had more of that um, style, like even though the style is quite different to the anime, yeah. I feel like if it had committed to a single style and if it had been that style, maybe it would have been better. Yeah, maybe. Trying to please too many people, huh? Yeah. All right. I, I guess that should probably do us. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right, guys. Um, How did you feel about this show? Have you watched it? If you did watch it, did you enjoy it? If you haven't watched it, are you going to watch it? Uh, yeah. Do you think we should kind of look at it as something that is uh, separate from the anime? Or do you think we need to kind of compare it to the anime uh, in order to enjoy it. Yeah, let us know what you think. You can contact us at twoasianblokes at gmail.com or you can join our Facebook group and be part of the conversation. Um, yeah, thanks for watching it, Tavi. Yeah, <laughs> no worries, man. <laughs> yeah, anyway, guys, uh, thank you for listening, as always. Um, yeah, until next time, bye. Yeah, cheers, bye.